us tonight. Oh, we good? Okay. Uh, I also want to thank Kat and Derek from Mystic River for, for hosting this public event tonight. Um, my name is Tony Zerley. I work for Weston and Samson Engineers. I'm here to talk about Shaker Glen tonight, and I'm going to try to share my screen here and see if it works. How's that look? Does everybody, can everybody see my screen? Thumbs up? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so as I mentioned, this my the project I'm here to talk about tonight is, is Shager Glen Extension Ecological Restoration Project. Um, this is a project that we've been working on for the last couple of years, and it's it's a great partnership with it from U.S. Fish and Wildlife and NOAA and Mass DEP, uh, working alongside the, the city of Woburn, Weston and Sampson and Mystic River to uh, develop this project. Uh, the Shaker Glen Extension is about a 12 acre parcel. It's located just southwest of Four Corners. Um, it's right now kind of in a dilapidated state it has been previously developed it but it is adjacent to the shaker glen conservation area so our goal is to restore um shaker glen back to a more natural uh state uh shaker glen brook runs through it and it, it's kind of a channelized um stream at this point so we're trying to open up the embankments provide some flood storage and, and provide some um, ecological restoration area so this is the map just to get oriented. Uh, you can see Four Corners is called out, Russell Street, Lexington Street. This is the Shaker Glen parcel here. And you can see there's there's a significant amount of flooding that occurs in this area of town. Um, it encompasses all of Shaker Glen, up through Shaker Glen Brook, through several culverts that go through Four Corners, and then eventually drains out to the Horn Pond. Um, the flooding here has, has been significant in the past. Uh, we've seen roadways flood, property damage. So as part of the ecological restoration work, we're also looking at resolving some, some of the, the floodplain issues that, that we see here. Um, as I mentioned, uh, it is a previously developed site. There is are impoundments on the brook. There are channelization of the stream. And there are areas that have been kind of paved over. There's roadways, driveways, there's foundations. In some areas, we even have... Uh, tiles or flooring tiles that are still left behind. Um, this is an example of, of, of where the stream kind of comes together in, in two very channelized um, embankments here. So the purpose of the design is to create more ecological space, right? Um, it's 12 acres. We're going to create about 33,000 cubic yards of flood storage, 200,000 square feet of wetland habitat, and we're going to extend the stream channel from where it is to about 1,500 additional linear feet, uh, while at the same time cleaning up the space and adding some educational spaces uh, with walking trails so that the public will have access to this, you know, well, well-invested property. So project components consist of wetland delineation and stream survey, stormwater and resiliency flooding modeling, and then site restoration design and permitting. These are some of the graphics. I'm not sure if uh, some of you were able to attend our public meeting uh, last fall. Uh, these are some of the graphics we showed. It just represents what we're trying to do here and some of the benefits of, of, of ecological restoration. So this is existing conditions plan. It shows where the stream is currently located. That's your dark blue and some of the wetland components uh, that are currently on site, which is that kind of teal green. The red is areas that have all been surveyed as, as um, developed. So we have broken up concrete, pavement, flooring tiles, foundations. So the goal is to remove everything in red and expand on the blues and greens. Our proposal calls for taking that stream that was very linear in nature and creating a more natural stream channel this is twofold. It creates additional ecological restoration areas for, for species to utilize the stream, but it also slows down floodwaters. Um, we're not impounding water here. We're actually slowing down those peak flows so that it takes time for water to travel from the west of the site to the east of the site through culverts. We're lowering the elevations where you see the green area to create more floodplain. 
and that is an extensive wetland or BVW that will be created as part of that project in that teal. Uh, right now, we are going through the permitting process. We submitted the Mass Environmental Policy Act or MEPA environmental notification form. Um, that is kind of a, a first round, a clearinghouse to um, let agencies know what we're planning on doing. So, you know, um, DEP would comment on that. Um, other agencies that are oversee um, this type of project workload. We have received our ENF certificate and we did get comments from DEP. They were they were general in nature and, and, and pretty much asked us to provide a little bit more information on several aspects of the project. Our goal is over the next month or so to submit a single environmental impact report. That was something that was great that did come out of the ENF rather than doing multiple environmental impact reports, we were granted the ability to just do one, which should streamline and, and, and quicken the process. So our plan is to submit that in the next couple of months. And then after that, continue with the permitting process, which will take us through DEP, uh, several of their, their, their divisions, um, waterways, wetlands. Uh, we'll also be working with Army Corps to, to, grant, uh, to gain access or approval through their permitting process. So with that, that's kind of an update on Shaker Glen and where we're at. I'll turn it back over to Kat. Perfect, thanks, Tony. Jen, do you wanna go ahead and share screen and give us the update on Herald Park? I will. Thank you. All the questions are at the end, Kat? Yeah, we're gonna let uh, everybody just check share in. the updates and then Very we'll good. Q and A. Um, you can see my screen okay, Cap? Yep, you're good. Perfect. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jennifer Ralstab. I'm a senior water resources engineer with Horsley Witten Group, and tonight I'm here to talk about the Hurled Park Climate Resilient Hub. Our project team consists of several staff members from the city of Woburn, um, Catherine and Daria from the Mystic River Watershed Association, who has done a great job uh, for us in our public engagement. Um, and uh, the Horsley Witten uh, group is leading a team of designers um, as well as as well as a subconsultant um, power corporation who is our structural engineer. Um, I wanted to just say that this project has been um, a project that we've been working on uh, through uh, several different phases um, with the project team since 2021. Um, and we've been engaging the neighborhood um, immediately surrounding Herald Park, as well as the broader community um, through several different avenues since 2021, through virtual meetings, on-site walkthroughs. We've met with uh, the Conservation Commission. We've had both online and in-person surveys. We've done flyering, uh, mailings door to door. Um, and as uh, Tony just mentioned, we most recently presented to the public um, in September um, as part of uh, the three project presentation at the library. Um, and you can see some of the photo, uh, the photo, last photo here shows that feedback um, that we got from some of you. Um, we've done um, our due diligence here to really reach out to as many people as we can. Uh, we know this is a very um, exciting project uh, for the community and especially for the neighborhood. Um, but we've also really tried in the last um, two years or so to really try to reach out even broader, uh, especially to our environmental justice community. Um, so we've also been translating our work into Spanish and Portuguese as well to reach some of that more diverse population. Um, we're here tonight in front of you to give our update, um, just uh, like Tony mentioned, and we are also uh, preparing for additional engagement. Uh, we do have a public on-site workshop planned um, in June, and there will be some additional opportunities for public engagement through our permitting process as well. So let's get to the project. Um, the project site is located at the former uh, Daniel Hurled Elementary School site, which is located off of Bedford Road and Sheridan uh, to the north. Um, the site is about 12 acres of public uh, city-owned land that includes the former school to the south, and then wooded wetland and upland areas to the north. Um, Cummings Brook bisects uh, that parcel uh, as it moves from the northeast to the southwest, and that um, brook eventually flows down to Fall Brook and then Horn Pond. Um, it also is in proximity to Re uh, Reg uh, Rock Hill and then um, some of the uh, DPW areas behind that. Um, so our uh, design project uh, really, as you kind of heard from the beginning, is a climate resilient hub. Um, we want to create a space 
um, that sort of meets a lot of different needs within the community. Uh, primarily a space that is accessible for people of all ages, abilities, and diverse backgrounds. You'll see this um, with some of the uh, playground elements, uh, inclusive playground elements that we're looking to design. Uh, incorporate, excuse me, uh, we want to design a climate resilient park that will help us to address flooding, um, improve our resilience uh, to the extreme heat events that we've been seeing lately, and manage the stormwater better through um, green or nature-based solutions. Um, and we also want to have active and passive landscapes for visitors um, to promote uh, public health and community well-being. Our project scope, um, since 2021, we've been really working through several stages of the design process. Um, we completed a concept uh, back in 2021, following some of the um, work that we did on site to do site survey, look at soil conditions, um, look at the resource areas. As I mentioned, there's a Cummings Brook kind of bisects that parcel. Uh, there are other wetland areas that um, are in the pr uh, periphery of that uh, brook as well. Um, and we took that information um, and that concept and refined it a little bit better. Over these last few months, we've been working um, to uh, update our um, hydrologic and hydraulic modeling work that we've been doing um, in HECRAS. We've looked at um, really trying to get uh, a management plan together for invasive uh, plant species. Uh, we've been looking uh, further at the cost estimates as, we, as we've been um, working with the city to advance this project. Uh, towards final design and permitting. And we're right now um, in the process of permitting. We've met with some, uh, done, done our pre-permitting coordination meetings um, with some of the uh, regulators. And we have started to submit um, our permits, including uh, the MEPA or Massachusetts um, Environmental Policy Act permit, um, just uh, similar to Shaker Glen. Um, and after that, we will get into final design um, post permitting process um, and get into those final elements that we need to go to bid. Um, I'm not going to speak into too much detail on this slide. It's a lot, but uh, there were several questions at the last meeting in September about what are all the uh, regulatory requirements for this project. Very similar to Shaker Glen, um, we have to go through several uh, different permitting processes because it is an ecological restoration project um, and does impact some of the resource areas, um, the brook itself and uh, the wetlands. And so um, these are temporary impacts and obviously the, the goal of the project um, as we kind of talked about is climate resiliency and restoration. And we're hoping um, that these processes, um, the work that we've been doing with the city with uh, pre-permitting coordination will make this process go faster, but we do anticipate that the permitting will take upwards of a year or so to complete. Um, so uh, for those who were able to attend our um, meeting in September or any of our past meetings, um, this design has not changed significantly since we last um, saw you. Um, the, as I mentioned before, we have a sort of two sides of this site currently, and we're kind of keeping that orientation for this project. Uh, the southern portion of the site um, is a uh, uh, inclusive uh, park. Uh, we have a, a parking area on uh, off of Bedford Road, a full-size basketball court, um, an inclusive and accessible playground with a splash pad area, pavilion, and some seating. Um, we are we have um, ADA accessible sidewalks that connect all of the active recreational areas. Um, beyond that, we intend to have a permeable um, but accessible pathway that uh, creates sort of a walking path um, uh, on the backside of the area. Uh, for those who are familiar with the current um, layout of the site, um, it will be sort of along the tree line in the back. Um, that will have uh, several different areas to pause uh, with benches and signage um, and connectivity. Um, moving to the north, as we um, go outside of our active space and get a little bit more into our passive space, we have boardwalks and other um, connected paths that uh, take you across uh, the existing wetland and connect you to our project really uh, aims to focus on both the management and um, treatment of stormwater in this project to be able to uh, further enhance um, the water that's going into Cummings Brook. Um, one significant part of the project uh, that we're doing is, is 
um, the current uh, Cummings Brook orientation is uh, sort of a straight and uh, I guess uh, uh, man-made channel. Uh, we're really trying to um, go back to sort of the native uh, sinuous um, alignment that was there before um, it was uh, impacted. Um, and that's one of the big things that we're doing also why the permitting uh, will take uh, so long. Uh, we also have a small um, five uh, spot parking uh, lot on the north side, um, and that will allow people on Sheridan Street to access the site. Um, this is just a little bit of a zoom in of that area for, so folks can see it a little bit better. Uh, we do have several different site amenities that are included within these areas that I pointed out before. Um, the hope here is that this really provides a community space um, for the neighborhood um, and and the broader um, the broader um, uh, city of Woburn. Um, I also just wanted to zoom in on this too to highlight um, the fact that you know we are um, really intending. Um, you can kind of see uh, with the proposed canopy and the plantings, um, really trying to restore uh, the existing site. Um, if you've been there recently, um, it is overtaken significantly by several different invasives. Um, and our hope is with our invasive management plan and our restoration plan, we can really restore this to sort of its its native. Um, uh, orientation. We have several different um, precedent images here on this slide that I just wanted to kind of reference here for those who haven't made it to some of our previous um, presentations. Our hope here is to, uh, as I said, incorporate all these elements to help um, engage uh, folks in the space, um, really be an inclusive and accessible um, area that we can um, enjoy um, both, uh, you know, the sort of active parts, but also the passive experience um, through our wetlands, through our um, our, our native um, plants and trees. And um, if you want more information, and obviously we're going to take questions tonight, we do have a website that's available on um, on the city's website, and I think Myra has their own um, information as well. So I think that's it for me. Thank you, Jen. Thank you so much. All right. Let me know when that comes up. Perfect. All right. Last but certainly not least is the Horn Pond Fish Passage. So I'll take this opportunity of the opening slide here just to orientate folks a little bit. The Scally Dam is right here at the top middle of the page. Uh, the fish ladder, which is most of what we'll be talking about tonight, is right in this area. There is a couple of associated components to the project, some brook restoration along here, up into the town line, which is basically where the graphic stops, and then a small rain garden feature over here in the parking lot. So the project mission statement is to construct a fish passage way so that river herring, American eels, and other species uh, uh, can migrate to and from the Horn Pond, to and from Horn Pond, which is their, uh, the final destination of the historical migration for, for these species. So the current state of where things uh, stand along the Mystic River, and this graphic shows starting really at the Amelia Earhart Dam up the Mystic River, into the Mystic Lakes. There was a fish ladder added here uh, around 12 years or, or so ago to help the migration past that dam point. And then, uh, I don't know, six, seven years ago, there was another fish ladder added in Winchester at the Santa Falls Dam. And now we are talking about the final fish ladder at the Scally Dam into Horn Pond. And you can see this is what I was referring to, the migration of the fish. Horn Pond is where they were, is their ultimate destination. So the state of that dam now, as the fish do get there uh, currently, as I, as I mentioned, to get into Horn Pond from the brook, they go through the existing auxiliary spillway from the, from the pond. So the dam here is just off to the left in this left-hand photo. Uh, the emergency spillway is what is used for the fish to get up into the pond. So it is not constructed for uh, fish migration. And obviously where it's an emergency spillway, uh, 
it's really main, meant to maintain a you know a higher elevation in the pond. So there's oftentimes where it goes dry altogether, depending on the seasonal migration. So this is not ideal for fish passage, and this is what we're going to uh, rectify. So what is a fish passage ladder? As I as I mentioned, it helps the fish get through constrictions in the in the river, primarily dams, and as in this case provide safe passage for them, facilitates their habitat, um, and it can be used also for a, a lot of public education and viewing purposes. The, the picture on the left here is a, uh, an example of a viewing window, which is a component that a lot of people are excited about potentially adding to, to this project. Um, Mystic River does a lot of fish counting activities here at uh, Scali Dam already. The, the new fish ladder will be constructed so that that fish counting is optimized. Uh, whiteboards on the bottom of the fish ladder, for example, to help really track uh, and count the fish in a much more efficient manner. So this is a, a, a snip from our current design drawings. Again, just a way of orientation. Here is the pond up here on the top of the page, the existing Scally Dam. The auxiliary spillway uh, where they currently used to get into the pond is over here on the right-hand side. Justin, so we can't really see your cursor. So if you want to just make sure you're oh. orienting kind of left or right or top or bottom, that'd be helpful. Sorry, I thought people no could worries. see the cursor. But, uh, so the dam is in the, uh, the far right of the page. You can see the existing dam structure. The auxiliary spillway is just below the dam, also going to the right. Lake Avenue is off the page here uh, in front of at the bottom of this graphic. So the fish passageway starts between the dam and, and Lake Ave uh, and then goes up in this sort of serpentine uh, manner up into the, the pond. So this is called a pool and nature, pool and weird nature like fishway. It's intended to somewhat emulate the stream as best as possible given the footprint constraints we have here and create these small pools where the fish can rest uh, along their journey up into the pond. This graphic just illustrates sort of that leapfrogging. So this is a, a straight section view of that serpentine, but the fish will enter down on the right-hand side, and then they, they jump their way up into each of these pools. So each pool is maybe 10 to 12 inches um, change of elevation that they jump up into. And you can see the graphic in the upper right hand corner, there's a little slot that's created for them. So, um, which will attract them as the water flows through that slot. That's what attracts the fish and they go up, migrate and step their way all the way up until they get into um, Horn, Horn Pond itself. Uh, this graphic also illustrates the little bridge that we have created to still maintain city access to uh, the dam itself for routine maintenance as well as on the far, which is in the center, sorry, I'm using my cursor again. And on the left-hand side, uh, there's a little viewing uh, area that's described here. So probably can't see the numbers, but the total elevation change from the brook up to the pond is about seven feet. So this is what uh, the fish are trying to navigate seven feet up. This next view is just a broader view of, of the whole uh, sort of uh, grass area that we'd be working in, the fish ladder on the right-hand side that I just described, the bridge right in the middle of it. And then on the left-hand side is a um, really a feature for the public, an access viewing um, ADA ramp that comes down to a lower level right next to, so in the center of the page to the left of the ladder itself would be a viewing area. And this is where we could potentially have that viewing window, uh, some access stairs down into that area. Um, folks will be able to cross over the bridge and, and still access and, and sit in benches on along that uh, pond front frontage on the on the over the bridge side. This graphic just shows you if you can see the two um, blue marks. You probably can't. I don't know if you can see the one and the two, but the one is down in that uh, viewing that recess viewing area that I mentioned. And uh, this illustrates, you know, sort of what you'd see. It may not be quite as deep as this sort of aquarium quite type view, but there would be three or four feet of water depth that folks would be able to actually see the fish migrating uh, in front of them up into the pond. And then the second view is standing next to the ladder, um, looking out at the pond itself. So it'll be quite a, a scenic and, and a beautiful attraction for 
both folks that live in the city of Woburn and, and those in the surrounding towns. A couple of the other associated components that I mentioned, the stormwater feature and some downstream brook restoration. Uh, this rain garden is in that parking lot area. You can see sort of the stripe marks there uh, that indicate the parking. The pond itself is at the top of the page. So this is uh, this primary purpose is to sort of capture a first flush runoff from the parking lot during a storm event and, and uh, capture and treat some of that runoff and improve water quality flowing off the parking lot into the, into the pond itself. The downstream brook restoration uh, on the downstream side of Lake Ave. Uh, there's only a short distance between uh, uh, the road and when we get to the city, uh, town of Winchester line. But here we'll create um, some additional uh, pools for the fish as they migrate upstream from Winchester so that they can have a chance to rest along this area as well. We'll improve some of the uh, erosion components, uh, harden some of the banks there a little bit. Uh, straighten out a couple of uh, uh, areas that have been filled in just to improve the stream flow through there, uh, as well as remove, there's a lot of downed trees and so forth like that, generally clean up that area. So where we stand currently, uh, it's on a similar track as, as Tony mentioned with Shaker Glen, perming phase is ongoing, we've completed our MEPR uh, and currently submitting for the rest of the permits. Once those uh, permits are received and um, depending on any design enhancements or feedback they want us to do, we will finalize the design and put it off to construction. Uh, currently we're anticipating construction in 2025. So this will be uh, not too far down the road. Uh, and with that, I will stop sharing, turn it over to Daria. Thanks, Justin. Um, I stop sharing. Oops, sorry. This is very exciting. Um, thank you for sharing all those presentations. We now have uh, open time for questions. You're welcome to pop your question in the chat uh, and we'll read it out. Or at this point, uh, you can raise your hand and uh, we'll call on folks to unmute and ask their question. It could be for any of the three projects. I'm on my phone and I can't see how to raise my hand. So can I just ask if the recording for this meeting will be available because I was sadly late? Yes, that's a great question, Meg. Um, yes, the recording will be available um, either tomorrow or the next day. I will post it to the project web pages. And um, if you're on any of the project e-lists, I'll send it out as well. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thanks, Meg. All right, we do have a few questions in the chat. Maybe um, I'll start with some of these questions. Um, and folks, again, feel free to raise your hand if you wanna kind of get in line. So Dylan, I have your question, I think is the first one. If you would prefer to ask it yourself, feel free to unmute. Uh, if not, I can just read from the chat. Um, when will the demo of Hurled Elementary start? Good question. Jay. I suppose I should take that. Yes, uh, thank you, Dylan. Uh, we've submitted as part of the city's capital plan for the funding to demolish the building, and they will act on that if it's a priority. Again, uh, there's a lot of things to do in the city, but they'll act on that sometime in July. If the funding comes through, then um, with the mayor and the city council's approval, we would move to re uh, remove the building sometime in the fall of this year. Great. That's awesome to hear. Thanks. Thank you both. All right, Josh, you were next in the chat. Um, give you a moment to unmute if you'd like to. Hi there. This is Josh's entire family, including two kids who are really excited about the Hurled Park project. Um, I have a related question to Dylan's. I, I'm just wondering what the anticipated completion date would be for that. Yeah, we, um, we're we currently looking at um, probably uh, starting, I think, a uh, portion or possibly phasing the, um, it, and that work would probably happen after the school uh, would be demoed. 
Um, and obviously all the permits are in. So um, I think the earliest that we would start would be uh, late 2025 or 26 um, start work. Um, and I don't know when the project would be completed. I think that would be dependent on funding. And we've got a number of grants that we still have to apply for, um, but we can't apply until the permits are all in hand. So that'll be uh, moving forward sometime in the uh, fall of this year. Perfect. Amazing. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, and then Linda had a question also related to permitting. Linda, if you'd like to unmute, feel free. If not, um, so are MEPA environmental forms and DEP comments available to the public? Tony, Tony, you want to answer this one? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 can an, I can answer that. Yeah. So MEPA has something called the Environmental Monitor. So if you go on Google um, or whether, whatever your search engine is and you type in MEPA, M-E-P-A, and then Environmental Monitor, you'll get their website. And on that, on that Environmental Monitor, you can search any of the projects that, that have gone through the MEPA process. You'll find the the EN, EENFs or the ENFs that have been submitted, but also the certificates. So search for the certificates and you'll find um, the certificate that had been issued and the comments that were received for each of these projects. Great, thank you, Tony. Uh, very quickly, Kat, if I could, I just wanted to mention Michelle Roden is out here. She is our MVP project manager. She's been a uh, champion of our project and I wanna thank yeah. her for being present, she's also a source of funding for the project. Uh, I also saw Steve Johnson, who was one of the trustees for Damaged Natural Resources, and they're a funding agency for Sugar Glen and Horn Pond. Thank you both. Thanks, Jay. All right, so Horn Pond, I got a question here. So Justin, um, well, Joe, if you would like to unmute, feel free to. All right. His question was, will the fish window be handicap assess accessible? Yes, that the 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 long ramp was an ADA compliant uh, ramp structure, and that's given the depth of the fish ladder, that's why the ramp was was fairly significant in length. So we'll have both uh, access through stairway and the and the ramp down to that uh, viewing area. Perfect. Thanks, Justin. All right, Erin had a question about um, Hurled Park. Erin, um, feel free to unmute if you'd like. All right, so Jen, her question was around Banner Drive. Will it still be a dead end? Yep, we are not changing the configuration of the road and we are not currently proposing a connection from the project to um, that dead end currently. Thanks, Jen. All right, Doris also with a question to Hurled Park. So her question is, what plans are in place for the disruption of the wildlife in the Hurled Park? Coyotes, possums, rats, et cetera. Yep, so as part of the project um, permitting, we have to um, communicate um, to Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program, um, Division of Wildlife and Fisheries, um, and several other agencies, um, as uh, Tony mentioned, that we have to go through um, the MEPA project uh, uh, and, and make sure that we're also meeting um, um, Endangered Species Act and the Wetlands Protection Act compliance. Um, so several regulatory agencies um, require that we uh, complete a and document, um, you know, species and the work that we're doing to address that. Um, so all of that uh, information is found within our permitting plans. Uh, currently, um, we currently, as in our, uh, as of this month, you know, have looked at um, some of the comments that we've received from others in terms of coyotes and other um, animals. Um, we know that there have been, um, you know, anecdotal um, stories of those being on site. We haven't uh, found any of those on site, or but we know that they they've been through there. Um, we will obviously do our best um, as part of the project. Um, to uh, maintain access to the site um, for wildlife. Um, as I mentioned in my previous um, presentation, we have uh, in, in the past in these restoration projects 
uh, acknowledge that there are temporary impacts to the resource areas um, and to the site um, as we go through the process of restoring and replanting with native species, uh, native plants. Um, that actually brings more wildlife um, to the site, not rats, uh, as much as we see some of our um, native flora and fauna really bloom. We see more um, of our um, pollinators and things like that that are really critical for the ecological restoration of the site and the ecosystem services that we would like this site to have. Um, so um, yes, there is temporary impact and yes, there will be some um, work that we'll need to do to address that. Um, but our hope is that the final um, design will help um, the, the site even more so than it is now. Great, thank you, Jen. Uh, Tyler. So Tyler had a comment. I want to advocate for the inclusion of any and all bike and electric vehicle infrastructure that could possibly be included. So bike racks, EV chargers at any parking spots involved, et cetera, um, i.e. horn pond chargers are broken. Perhaps they could be fixed, expanded as part of this. Any response to that? Yeah, I guess I can take that. Um, EV chargers are planned at all the parking lots um, along with bike, bike accommodations. Um, and I will bring that up to the mayor and the DPW um, about our charging station down at Horn Pond. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Jay. All right. Next question from Jennifer. What is the timeline for completion on the fish ladder? So as I mentioned, we still have significant permitting period ahead of us, but we're hoping to get through that by the end of this year. So if all goes well. It will be bid either late fall or sometime over the winter uh, with construction starting in, in 2025 and hopefully completing in 2025. It's not really a long duration project. So um, as we talk here tonight, we're hoping that it's complete in 2025. Great, thank you. All right. Again, just a quick footnote, as soon as we have permits in hand, and we have a half dozen that we have to acquire, then we will be um, applying for a couple of different grants. Thank you. Yeah, so all of that pending funding. Uh, Marsha, regarding the Herald, is there any way to ex um, expedite the removal of the building? As a neighbor, I'm seeing more rodents. Jay, this is definitely you. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. Um, again, our, our fast arc schedule is based on obtaining funding in July, and um, as quickly as it's approved, we will move forward with it. Uh, in the interim, I will talk with the Board of Health about uh, any kind of additional road control we can do over there. We'll have it inspected, and uh, if necessary, we'll put traps there. Thank you, Jay. All right, Joe, with another question about Herald. Will the path between Bedford Road and Sheridan Street be closed for an extended period during construction? It's used by a lot. It's used by a lot of the neighborhood. Yes. Um, so just uh, for clarification reasons, there is a an existing asphalt path that connects um, the Sheridan Street side to the school side. Um, we do anticipate that that will be closed uh, for the duration of the project um, of the projects depending on again phasing so um, there will be more uh, to that as we get through the the permitting and, and funding so great thanks jen all right marcia um so i think this is also hurled uh, as a neighbor i'm also concerned about vandalism and possibly people in the building that should not be Jay, I think this is another you question. I know that the uh, police department does regular patrols with there, and the DPW checks on the um, security of the building quite often. So, and I haven't heard of any problems, but if somebody knows of anything, you could um, just call the city or call the police department. Thank you, Jay. All right, Matilde. Um, all right, Shaker Glen, um, what is the expected timeline to complete the Shaker Glen project? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be, sim you know, it's similar to, to Horn Pond. We're going through the permitting process now. We anticipate having permits in hand 
probably you know late this winter, early next year. Um, and then it's it's a funding mechanism, right? It's getting the funding in line to do the construction of the of the work. Um, so we're hopefully to start in 2025. Um, it's a lot of earthwork at Shaker Glen, and it's a, it's a stream realignment. So we have to you know watch the time of year restrictions we may we we may have based on some of the, the permits that we have to get. Um, so the goal is to shoot for 2025. Um, it really depends on when the permits come in and, and the funding that's available to us to, to get the project constructed. Great, thank you, Tony. Uh, the family of Josh Yardley again has a great comment. If you guys would like to unmute, feel free to. If not, I'll read it. All right, our son, Dev, who is six, wants me to let everyone know that he's very excited about the Hurled Park project and hopes that it's ready soon. Um, I love it. Definitely my favorite comment of the night. All right, Jennifer, we've got another Shaker Glen uh, question. So specifically speaking regarding the Shaker Glen cleanup, is this project related to an initiative back in 2021 where residents in the Shaker Glen area were asked to reach out regarding our regarding property flooding. I had reached out, but it hit a dead end because the flooding is to our outdoor front area by the driveway and did not enter our house. Do you anticipate any flooding issues as the cleanup and expansion of green space is made? I'm in favor of it, just trying to understand the connection, if any, and impact to the area. If I could, just as a prelude to Tony, um, Damage Natural Resources actually reached out to us in 2007. So we've been working on this for quite a while. Um, flooding of the Four Corners has, uh, because of changes in rainstorms, has been more obvious in the past half half dozen years. So the the project has grown from strictly environmental restoration into restoration plus floodplain plus uh, drainage management. Um, and yes, we are addressing as many things as we can. Tony, you want to add to that? Yeah, thanks, Jay. Um, Jennifer, that that's a great question, right? Because anytime you're working in the floodplain, which we are with Shaker Glen, there's always concern that, you know, are we going to modify the floodplain? Are we going to change it? Is it going to cause me um, any more damage than what I'm seeing now? Um, I don't know specifically where you live, but I, I will say this. We've modeled this project numerous times. And the, based on the preferred alternative that that you saw tonight the water elevations or the flood elevations in all storm events in the shaker glen area will go down so you'll 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 experience less flooding we are drastically increasing the floodplain and we are slowing down water as it moves through that shaker glen extension by just the alignment of that stream so upstream of the, of that parcel and downstream of that parcel um, we'll sh we'll see lowering of the floodplain, so um, it will be an improvement um, to what you currently have now, and 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 that will all we've kind of laid that out in the ENF, and we're going to hit on it again in the EIR, and it will be it will be fully vetted through all the permits that we have to do, Mass DEP and the Conservation Commission um, of Woburn are going to look at that very closely um, to make sure that we are an improvement. It's one of the performance standards we need to meet associated with work in the floodplain. So um, I think you'll be very happy with this project. It's it's going to solve, it won't solve every problem, but it will improve conditions out there. Great. Thank you, Tony. Um, Dylan had a question. Uh, in best case scenario, roughly how much of each of the projects will be funded by grants? What happens if the grants can't be obtained? Good question. Jay, I think this is a you question. Oh. Um, it each project is targeted for about 75% grant participation. Um, some are competitive, some are um, dedicated. And going forward, there's no way to really know. Um, I don't have a crystal ball. I know that people like our projects and we've done very well to date. So I expect that we will get funded. Thanks, Jay. All right, Marsha with a question about the Herald Park. Will there be a pathway at the end of Banner Drive? I'm afraid there will be pe people parking on Banner Drive and there is so much, excuse me, there is not much leeway to leave driveways on that street. 
And also thank you for the work on this. I'm so happy the area will be used so wisely and be used by so many people. Um, Jen. Yep, so there currently is no proposed connection to the end of Banner Drive. There is an access point that is currently there between the dead end and um, the hurled. We are not eliminating that as part of this project, but there will be no pathway um, or specific entrance way as part of this project. Great, thank you, Jen. All right, um, another question about Hurled Park. So this is from Joe. What is the likelihood of getting the necessary funding to remove the school this July? Is there anything the neighborhood, neighborhood can do to advocate for this? Yeah, I'll jump in. Thank you, Mayor. So this is one of many, many capital projects that we'll be reviewing. We've been receiving requests from each of the department heads uh, across the city as we begin the budget process for the operational budget as well as the capital budget. So once we have all, all that information in hand, we'll review it and prioritize. Uh, it should be noted that the funds to take down this building, uh, those this project is competing for funds such as that with the request for a new fire department ambulance, uh, as well as other significant capital projects within the city. Uh, I understand that the, the school has been vacant for a long time. I also understand the, the vast and significant support for this project throughout the city. Uh, I, I can't tell you right now as we sit here where this falls in the list of the many capital requests we'll get, but I hear you, I understand it's a priority. I'm gonna do our best to try to get this building down as soon as possible so this project can proceed. Great, thank you, Mayor. All right, next question is, um, is any attention being paid to native fungi? Healthy fungi are important to the health of ecosystems. Who wants that one? Well, well <laughs> I can say as part of the ecological restoration piece of our project, um, are we are we identifying specific fungi that are on the property now? No, but we're we're looking at ways of creating different types of ecosystems within that wetland restoration area. That includes some deadfall that will be brought back in. Um, so that that deadfall that that tree material will potentially produce fungi. Um, so there will be decaying matter. There will be that type of material, that type of ecosystem that will be generated in that wetland restoration area. Um, our goal more specifically is to remove invasive species that are found there now so that the more healthy and, and the more native um, vegetation will, will have a place to thrive. Great, thank you, Tony. Jen, I'm assuming you would have a similar answer in terms of Herald Park. 100%, <laughs> thank you, Tony. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, let's see. So Jennifer had a question going back to Shaker Glen. Um, our flooding is probably more likely due to poor street drainage and root of the water flow to storm drains. Oh, but thank you for those details to reassure, we, reassure us we didn't need any additional issues. Um, thank you for that. And here we go. One more Shaker Glen question from Eric. Will the ha hiking paths along Shaker Glen extend through the new conservation stream area that is proposed? Any connection for the paths to have public access to four corners? Any repairs to existing bridges and paths along the existing Glen? And thank you for the careful planning of these important projects. Tony. Yeah, I can I can answer that. So the, the hiking trails that you saw in the plans are, are, are part of phase two of that, that project. We're, this is a, you know, we're gonna do the ecological restoration work um, as part of phase one, the pathways and, and the trail systems will come in as part of phase two, which would be shortly thereafter. It's not going to be a long delayed process. The intent there is that all that pathway system will be connected to the, the larger conservation area of Shaker Glen. So the hope or the plan is to build a, a one um, continuous path system with access points for both of those properties. Um, we will be having an access point to this Shaker Glen extension area off of Russell Street. So you'll be able to get in there, um, park, and then access the trail system. 
this project does not go into the larger existing Glen area and, and, and look at repairing bridges or pathways over there. Um, sounds like a, a great project. Sounds like something that may be needed, but it's not part of this project at this time. Great, Tony. Thank you so much. Um, well, that was all the questions in the chat. Um, and we're kind of right at time. It's almost 6.55. So I'm actually going to turn it over to Daria to talk about a couple ways that that you all can get involved if you would like to. So Daria, give me one second and I'll share a screen. Awesome. Thanks. Oops. Great. So Justin mentioned uh, that Myra has been monitoring the herring migration at Horn Pond for a number of years now. And um, part of or all the data that was collected was by volunteers that kind of contributed this advocacy and really highlighted the need for an improved fish passage um, at Skelly Dam. And uh, you can be part of this effort. Um, this is getting the before picture before all of this exciting um, work happens at Horn Pond. And we still have 10 time slots open where we need uh, volunteer monitors. And you go to this beautiful spot uh, right along Horn Pond and count and fish for 10 minutes. Um, submit your data form, and that goes to creating an estimate for how many fish we're able to make it in um, using the current spillway method. Uh, and we're really excited to see how many fish, more fish make it in using the new uh, fish passage. So we our training for this um, volunteer opportunity is tomorrow. Um, so if you want to see me again tomorrow night, um, I will drop the information for that uh, in the chat. And we would love for you to join us. Um, next opportunity is um, Jen mentioned that um, this year we're hosting one virtual public meeting, which is tonight, and we're also hosting an on-site workshop to really get folks involved in uh, the site and get to know it, walk around it, and uh, that's happening on June 13th. Um, we're going to bring volunteers out to help clean up the site, uh, remove trash, um, and other kind of uh, debris items and uh, join us 5 30 to 7 p.m it's a thursday evening should be lovely summertime uh, and all the supplies will be provided for you to um, help pick up trash around the site so i'll drop all the links for that in the chat uh, and the last thing i wanted to share is that we have email lists um, that you can sign up for for all three of these projects and uh, you'll be notified if uh, another event pops up or a project update, um, receive kind of the recording to this uh, meeting and other PowerPoint presentations. So uh, we invite you to sign up for those as well if you want to track along um, the progress for these projects. So I have a lot of uh, links to share in the chat now. All right. Okay. So this is... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is herring monitoring information. This is the Curled Park volunteer event. And uh, these are the three email lists um, that you can add your email and um, get email updates about these three projects. Perfect. Dari, thank you so much. And uh, hopefully we'll see some of you all out in actual person at these places. But um, yeah, I just want to thank everybody for coming out tonight for all these great questions and all the great support. Um, and I hope you all have a good, good rest of your night. Thank you so much. Any closing comments from the mayor? Kat? Uh, just to say thank you very much. We appreciate the update. We appreciate the input from our residents. We look forward to all three of these projects advancing and uh, people enjoying them for years to come. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all.